Hello everybody, welcome to the third day of our non-conference regarding client validated states, state RGB and spectrum protocols. This day will be devoted for analyzing the Lightning Network and how we can embed all those protocols and required functionality into the Lightning Network. And also in the second half we will be discussing the possible uh, software service wallets uh, architectures and the libraries that will be part of this system. Uh, I would like to start with a quick uh, recap of the first two days. Just to summarize, uh, we discussed a lot of uh, the actual stack of RGB protocols and we have solved a number of issues. Namely, over the course of our discussions, we agreed uh, on multiple improvements to public key tweaking procedure and uh, we performed analysis of different aspects of taproot interoperability and compatibility. Also, we have agreed upon the roadmap for introducing the script scripting system later at the moment when the uh, simplicity language will be more uh, ready for the production. However, still we also uh, enumerated a number of questions that are still being unsolved. Uh, the good news is that these questions are not preventing us from moving forward with the protocol implementation. However, it would be very nice to add zero-knowledge proofs to multi-asset transfers to hide the actual uh, identifiers of the assets and states uh, and increase the privacy. Uh, we also need to discover, is it really possible to remove range proofs uh, from the Pedersen commitments in case we will use uh, 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 256 uh, integer bit integers for amounts. And uh, we are still uh, didn't decide it upon the best procedure for the pr fingerprinting. Uh, yesterday evening, um, well, we, we were discussing it yesterday in the morning and we came to conclusion that probably it will be the best way is to use determinism of miniscript and uh, apply function printing at the miniscript level. However, yesterday mm, Martin approached me and said that we can use another approach with this emulating the stack and executing the script and taking the public key from the stack at some specific opcode, for instance, when we have a check seek and check multi seek with verify variants, we know that the stack content will be deterministic and we can deterministically allocate public keys there. So uh, that was the original uh, version of the standard. However, there is a lot uh, that there, there was a number of um, com mm, complexity, associated complexity required to implement that. So I would like to consider uh, what would be the best way of using the uh, miniscript determinism or emulating stack and analyzing and checking the signatures. So anyway, uh, I think we wouldn't be doing it today. Maybe we will have a time in the more in the evening. We can finish discussion on the best way later. Uh, anyway, at least one of these routes that will be chosen, it will be working so it doesn't prevent us from uh, doing it, uh, the implementing the RGB. So today we will be talking about the Lightning Network, as I already said, and I would like to start uh, with uh, not explaining how the Lightning Network works, because everybody is knowing that already, uh, but explaining why, what challenges do we need to solve to add any protocol into the Lightning Network. And the second section will be focused on how we can knowing those challenges, how we can address them with RGB protocol and solve RGB specific needs. Uh, so we all know that Lightning Network is a scalability solution for the uh, transactions over the Bitcoin network. However, it's not very good scalable as the number of nodes and uh, multi-hop payments yet because of different reasons. We covered that briefly in the first day. And it has privacy improvements, which are considerable, significant, but however, not absolute. In order to 
uh, to structure the functionality and the changes uh, and everything that we have to do to implement RGB, I would like to propose this view of the Lightning Network. Because in fact, the Lightning Network has become a set of uh, standards, interacting standards. It's not some, it's not just a payment channel. First of all, additionally to payment channel, it is also a P2P network and uh, messaging system over the P2P network. Uh, and these are two, two crucial parts because of course you can embed something into the state, uh, into the commitment transactions, into funding transactions, but you still have to coordinate everything over the network. So you need to change also the messaging and we know that there is three types of messaging that exist uh, in the Lightning Network that are shown here. So at the bottom level, we have uh, authentication protocol, which we don't need to change anyhow. On top of it, uh, normal P2P messaging is built when you send a message directly to another node. Uh, and on top of that, we have a gossip protocol that allow to um, propagate the message across the whole entire network and onion routing protocol which allows you to also to propagate the message but directly to a specific receiver and they are all built on top of a uh, generic p2p messaging layer uh, on the state uh, management side uh, we have and uh, i also have created this kind of table so we have a state management and p2p network and network uh, parts of the standards in vertical and on over the horizontal layers we have a part that is specific to p2p communications i mean direct communications between the nodes they may be not always a part of the state channel like with the p2p messaging the init message and channel establishment uh, messages they do not operate under the existing channel and uh, the network part which involves participation of more than two nodes so they are happening outside of particular state channel uh, frequently invol involving many of them uh, so, for yeah, for P2P layer in the state management, of course we have a protocol for creating and mm, structuring in deterministic way a funding transaction. Uh, we have a mm, parts of the commitment transactions which are related to the local and remote node only they are not covering the any multi-hop payments which may pass through this channel and we have two me mechanisms so the genesis for the p2p level is the funding transaction the state updates are happening in the two outputs of the commitment transaction actually affecting the rebalancing of the state of the channel and uh, at the when we have a failed state for instance, because of the connectivity problem, or if somebody was, wants to cheat, we have a protocols for resolving this situation. At the present version, we have a penalty mechanism, which allows a party who was, uh, mm, who, how to say that, the party which were subjected to a, a failed state update, an invalid state update date, to penalize the party who provoked that. And with the L2 upgrade, a new version of the protocol for fixing the state update failures, uh, we will have not a penalty mechanism, but a different mechanism. I wouldn't go into details about L2, it's outside of the topic of today talk. And also on the network level for multi-hop payments, uh, we have hash time lock smart contracts, which are presented in the form of uh, additional to additional partially signed transactions and uh, in a form of additional uh, outputs inside the commitment transaction. Uh, it has own drawbacks. So probably with the, uh, with the launch of Schnorr signatures, uh, the Lightning Network will be able to move to uh, discrete log contracts 
or pay to point elliptic curve point uh, way of organizing multi-hop payments. So this is the overview of the protocols involved in the Lightning Network, and this point of view simplifies at least for the design phase the implementation of embedding of RGB specific aspects into different uh, business cases like establishing of the channel, uh, updates of the channel, penalty mechanics, uh, multi-hop payments, uh, and messaging, network messaging. There is another view on the Lightning Network architecture, which is also very useful. It was designed by Christian Decker, and it also, I have I added the L2 and uh, elliptic curve uh, point derivations as a possible future standards because in the, pro with the dashed line, because of the in the present version of Lightning Network, they are not yet. Uh, so we have a layer, so a transport layer. We have a base layer for framing and feature negotiation. We have update layer with the penalty uh, uh, and L2 mechanics and gossip messaging. We have a transfer layer uh, for multi-hop payments and uh, the routing layer. So that's an overview of Lightning Network. Now I would like to cover a set of problems which we need to solve and address uh, over the course of um, designing and adding RGB to Lightning. Uh, the problem, the first problem that this architecture that I have presented, it allows you to structure uh, the functionality. However, the actual board specifications, they are covering these standards in a very unpredictable way. So uh, it happened that the board specifications, they are des describing not the layers, of Lightning Network architecture that can be isolated and abstracted from each other, but rather sometimes layers, sometimes verticals, and sometimes some pieces. For instance, uh, if we have a, a protocol for messaging, it also it covers messaging over all of the layers, including multi-hop payments, and um, basically you see how the standards fit into different protocols. Uh, with the current specification, it is even impossible to reconstruct uh, such simple things like a sequence diagram for multi-hop uh, payments. Because these different pieces of the puzzle re require to reconstruct the whole sequence of event which should happen in the Lightning Network at the level of changing the transactions, messaging, and so forth. They are just spread around all the specifications. And this will lead us to the situation when, for instance, we would be moving from HTLC into elliptic curve derivation-based uh, multi-hop payments. We need to not just add another standard. We need to rewrite or apply a patches to at least one, two, three, four, five different bolts and synchronize them between each other, which is really orga uh, organizationally challenging. And uh, the, the problem uh, can be narrowed down that the actual specification process for describing and developing any standard works like with the law, where you have some version of the specifications upon which, if you need to add a functionality, you create another specification defining how you change, modify, or add to the base protocol and so forth and so forth, like we have with BIPs, for instance, today. We are not editing BIPs. If they are not drafts, they can't be changed anymore. If you need to change something, you create a new BIP, discuss it, and uh, do a new standard, and both standards are applied. Unfortunately, with bolts, the situation, they are just not domain separated, but also we have a version first of both specification. It is a, a tag applied in the GitHub repository. So it's not the document. It is a tag across all the documents. So it's a very different perspective. 
and out of that we have all the PRs randomly appearing and you it, it, it end up so that each day you are going to the GitHub, you read different version. And you don't understand because the implementation of this specification happens in real time. So while we have a version one, it is impossible to understand under which version plus which PR each particular node implementation is working today. And it, it creates so many uh, problems in changing and working with these protocols and software that I would say that it is the main challenge that we will face. And yeah, we already discussed why the proper abstraction uh, is important. And all of these points, I actually we are facing that Lightning Network uh, sometimes fails in these aspects because, for instance, you know, there was a bug uh, discovered rec recently that allows a loss of funds. Uh, and the bug was ca caused by the actually absence of a proper specification process. That's why it has affected all the nodes. Uh, we have a significant interoperability issues across different implementation of Lightning Network, uh, problems with the software upgradability, and the introduction of new features will be really challenged, especially when we will introduce something bigger, like move to L2 or move from HDLC. It will be a very significant challenge to the Lightning Network. The second kind, uh, the third problem, or the second, is that uh, Lightning Network is not designed with uh, any layer three solutions in mind, because from the perspective of extending Lightning Network functionality, there could be a two different approaches. The first one, we can extend payment functionality of the Lightning Network with uh, such things like better routing, better ch uh, some challenge rebalancing strategies and algorithms, submarine swaps and so forth and so forth. It's, it is a layer two extensions to the Lightning Network itself. And the node software uh, and the specifications, they allow to somehow to do this part. However, when you need to build a layers on top of Lightning Network, utilizing parts of the Lightning Network, it is much harder to do, especially at the low level of software design and node design for the Lightning Network. So it's not a problem, that much problem of a specification, which are separate problem, but a problem of Lightning Node implementations. The implementations were created without thinking that somebody will try to build something on top. Even C Lightning, the best version that provides extensibility, the architecture of the nodes software stack and the abilities that can be uh, delegated to the extensions are limited in such a way that can you, you can easily add new routing or something like that, but you wouldn't be able to add new fields to the messages across the protocol. It's basically a limitation of their architecture. And that is the second challenge. Uh, so right now we have no proper extensibility for Lightning nodes uh, except the C Lightning, which is already, as I described, built in a way that it doesn't allow us to extend it easily in the way we need to extend. There is no proper layering of the Lightning Network tech specification itself, and there is no clear way how to introduce uh, some of the features. Uh, the, this last pi point is not valid anymore, so we have have figured out on the last lightning conference how to do that but again it it wasn't i spent three months trying to do that via github and normal development communications and it was possible to settle and find out the solution only on the personal meetings over the conference and that is not how the decentralized technology should be evolving and being developed and the third problem is that Lightning Network is not even a better yet. Uh, what is Lightning Network today? It is, as I said, uh, we can say that there are two-party protocols and multi-party parts of the protocol stack. For two-party, we have authentication and messaging, funding protocols, state updates, and state restoration. For multi-party, we have gossiping, routing, value transfers, multi-hop value transfers, and onion uh, routed messaging. And here in yellow, I have shown the parts that are going to change. Practically, 
80% of the protocol are operating under the standards which will be deprecated quite soon because each of them have a lot of limitations. For finding, we will move from B-party finding to factories and loanlets, especially with the Schnorr signatures. For state updates, we will move from 01 uh, from first version of witness into taproot. For state restoration, we will go from the penalty into L2. For gossip, we will introduce probably trampoline or something that will allow us to reduce the traffic over the network. For routing, we will there is a lot of experimentation with the new routing protocols. For value transfers, we have to move from HTLC to adapter signatures and discrete log contracts, these payments to electric points. So it will the Lightning Network in two years would have nothing, nearly nothing in common with the Lightning Network as of today. So we can't name it a battle or release because everything is going to change. Um, I, I wouldn't say that it's exactly the Sphinx is chaining, ra rather than there would be a different routing protocols which will enhance the efficiency of road path funding. So I would say that it's not exactly correct in that line. But the idea is that the new routing strategies which are not there will appear. And we need that because we need them. Basically, the current uh, algorithm for finding the best routes, they are not that scalable as we need to. Uh, in chronological orders, these changes will ar uh, arrive in this sequence. The first, there will be some internal improvements to the protocol. First of them will be a change of two remote output of commitment transaction into P2, P2 witness a script hash, and maybe a new routing protocols will be introduced. And we don't know something else because it can appear any day. Uh, then, when Bitcoin will adopt the Schnorr signatures, they will bring ability to introduce uh, to move from HTLC contracts to pay to elliptic curve points with the DLC contracts and adapter signatures and nodelets for multi-party P2P channels. Uh, Taproot and Tapscript, which will come together with Schnorr, will completely deprecate the transaction structure because we will move from the scripts into Taproot outputs in each of the transactions. And Seekhash no input. Probably it will happen after Schnorr and Taproot in Bitcoin, and when we will have it, we will move to L2. So first we will change the structure of the transactions, then we will get rid of HTLC, then we will change again the structure of transactions for Taproot, and then we will remove, H uh, we will uh, go, again, change the structure of transactions because of L2. Uh, so at least three times the whole transaction structure will be completely refactored. Many of those changes will also depend on Bitcoin soft forks and it's hard to predict when they will happen. Uh, so it will take years for Lightning protocols to become stable. Before that, using Lightning and Layer 3 solution means constant re-implementation, re reintegration and software upgrades also and also a lot of interoperability problems. Some of the lightning problems, also the, th the lightning protocols themselves, they have uh, problems that actually allow different forms of attacks on the network. Some of them may be changed, may, may be fixed, and we have a solution to fix them or even a roadmap to fix. Some of them do not have a definite solution. So th the first part of these problems are uh we uh, there is a possible well not attack but um something like which we will can name an attack t uh, on the associated with a two remote output which uh um, it's hard to explain in, in two words but basically uh, for now we have two remote output is paid to uh, witness public key hash output that the remote node can receive the funds instantly after the channel close and the local node will receive funds after the delay and uh, this in distorts the incentives uh, during the channel closer closing process and the solution for that is to, to move to pay to witness script hash for to remote output I missed the 
letter W there before script. Uh, the second problem is related to HTLC multi-hop payments because today there is possible an attack when you have uh, a path and there you have two nodes which you are operating and the some nodes inside them you can just keep uh, you can just fool the nodes on internal paths and uh, don't provide, don't allow them to receive the fees because you wouldn't expose a secret uh, to them. So basically, with HTLC, you have a shared secret across all the paths, and if you got to know the secret at the beginning of the path, you will also know it at this point much later without a message passing all the nodes in between. I, this can be done and fixed, and actually that's why it was a proposal to fix it uh, with a discrete load contract uh, based uh, multi-hop payments, but they do require a Schnorr signatures to be implemented in Bitcoin network. The same problems with the penalty transactions, which really complexifies the way how uh, the restoration of the channels uh, after some software failures or network connectivity failures. We all know that, and L2 solves that, but we need Zcash no input soft fork in Bitcoin to, to be able to do that. A lot of liquidity issues with the multi-hop transactions and ch channel uh, deplete depletement from the funds, I don't know how to say that, but basically there are a number of solutions for these challenges, submarine swaps, uh, befunded channels, now we have only one party funding the channel and we already, uh, standards being already discussed on how to move finally to befunded, be party funded channels. Uh, new protocols on channel rebalancing coming, and I will be talking later as respect to one of the liquidity solutions, but possible liquidity solutions, and I will explain why. Uh, and also, finally, the last uh, problem that can be addressed is uh, on chain channel opening that can be done with the channel factories, but again, waiting for Schnorr and nodelets, which also requires Schnorr. Uh, Nodelets is a proposed by ZMNXTHPP uh, <laughs> who uh, are suggesting a multi-party. So you use music to, you still have a two-party channel, but each of the parties are multiple parties on the music. Mm. There are also problems with no definite solution. The first is one is, we don't know the solution yet, is the routing again. Uh, and gossiping. Uh, the reverse American call option, which is very important to RGB because it basically prevents from a safe implementation of multi asset lightning network. So when you mentioned yeah. Um, yeah, payment points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because DLC is discrete log contracts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I've been writing an article to show, together with uh, Joy Bretner, that we can actually solve the, disc uh, the uh, uh, um, American call option problem with discrete log contracts. And that works already with HTLCs. We just have to change the structure of commitment transactions and what we put in there. Um, so, so this problem, I would say, is solved. Oh, that's very interesting. It's, Can just we, uh, it's just not implemented. Okay, perfect. But, uh, but we have the article out, and I think nobody has said that this doesn't work. So, yeah. okay, c let's let's discuss it, and I would like to look at it because yes, if we can solve a lot of problems with a single shot. It would be really good because I was really um, afraid of this uh, problem. And the privacy still, uh, you can suggest and. Uh, you you can basically sorry I'm a bit tired today um, you can disassemble the transaction and channel up this th by monitoring network traffic you can solve a lot of uh, privacy obfuscation mechanics of the lightning network so if you can observe light uh, network traffic you can actually know who pays whom uh, our aim is to fix, uh, well, so how we will address that? We have described all these problems with the Lightning Network, how we can move forward despite all those problems. The plan is to fix some subset 
of Lightning Network to be able to provide robust operation for Lightning Network based with payments with Bitcoin and USDT and other RGB based assets, uh, which should bust, uh, boost adoption of censorship resistant money. And the proposed solution is um, stable to stabilize part of the functionality and define this part is as a very strict and formal standards with a fixed uh, version and like it's not a competing uh, implementation of Lightning Network but the idea is to rewrite the bold standards in a layered manner and everything that is bold it's kind of a brainstorming part and everything new that is introduced into bolts will again be layer re layerized and created as a new standards on top of the previous standards so it's like to digest bolts into more formal specification process and to define which of the lightning node implementations comply with the which of these strict standards uh, so yes, that is all for the li pure and lightning network analysis. I think it's better to make the break right now because I'm also a bit tired before we will move into specifics of how RGB can be done on such lightning network. Maybe some discussion. Let's have a questions and make a break after that. You mentioned that the bolts are not easily upgradable or, or confused in the upgrade. How does that differ from BIPs? Because as I understand, you can still update BIPs, but you do so individually for every BIP. Is that what you mean? Well, I, I, I don't know where the cases of BIP up updates after, because BIPs, they have a um, process like draft at the level of draft bips may may be updated endlessly but everybody who implements this bip can understand that at any moment of time the specification may be updated but when you have a standard phase basically the standard shouldn't change if it happens for bips it's a it's a failure of bip standardization process but like with the rfc standards for uh, standards for internet and many others the normal practice is at the draft level you discuss and update later when you have a standard you don't update it and if you need to change something you should just do another standard referencing the previous one and saying like with a law like this law updates the article that of that previous law and makes it deprecated the new reading should be like that so it's kind of you create a, a time chain of the standards you are, you, you are, um, otherwise, it's really hard to maintain the interoper interoperability in networks. Okay, let's do a break then. More coffee. Yeah. Uh, first of all, what RGB can give for to a Lightning Network? Uh, first of all, it may allow multiple privacy enhancements with the client-side validation itself, with a zero knowledge for confidential amounts, and with a hardening uh, network analysis for the Lightning Network transactions. Because part of the value transfers will happen over RGB over Lightning, which wouldn't be affected at the level of the Bitcoin balances. Uh, it also potentially may enhance LNP BP, uh, Lightning Network and Bitcoin protocol adoption as because of the more interest to stable coins in the Asian markets and other markets uh, due to a lower volatility. So it may be a driver of the network use growth. And it may be, it's still very early to say that, uh, but we are looking into how it will be possible to move Bitcoin off chain into client validated state. And uh, it, if in case it will happen, it will, it can also help uh, uh, scalability and liquidity. Okay, so now the details of the protocol. I will go through, uh, first of all, so I will discuss a transaction structure and messaging. I will start with the transaction structure and I will analyze uh, different transaction types in Lightning Network channel 
and outputs of that transaction and address specific parts we will be modifying and using and explain how we are going to use them. Each transaction will be presented by these black box by these boxes. Uh, if it is great, it means the transaction is on chain. If it is white, background is white. It is a partially signed transaction residing inside the channel. Uh, also, at the side part of the transaction, I am showing with this pink color the off-chain client validated state attached to the seal. So meaning if you have on the side of the transaction output uh, something in pink, it means that there is a seal, this transaction output defined as a seal, and there is a state like asset at the amount attached to that particular transaction output. Uh, also, uh, The transaction itself contains input part and output part. Each transaction output is separated by a solid black line. If there will be a dashed line, it means within the same output we have different spending conditions, like branches of Bitcoin script. So this is the singular output with the two different branches. And finally, as here, we will be tweaking public keys. And the point at which we apply the tweak is demonstrated in this pink color. And basically, inside the channel, we will always have a commitment to the state in the same transaction in which we have the state attached to the seals in transaction outputs. So uh, we, are, we will be defining seals and committing to this new state in the same, within the same transaction. Uh, I will also briefly cover other uh, symbols. So this one means that we hash everything after it and it's it is a hash value which is present inside the transaction output script pub key. Uh, we also have different symbols for different standard script parts like different logs, uh, se uh, check sequence verify, ch check time lock verify. Uh, we have a symbol for hashed uh, hash and pre-image of that hash which can unlock the hash function and this one denotes a uh, public keys which are derived by the lightning node from uh, base point provided at the time of the channel establishment. The first transaction, you probably all know that uh, channel consists of funding transaction, a symmetrical pair of commitment transactions, and two HTLC transactions partially signed per each HTLC output in the commitment transaction. So we will analyze them one by one. We will start with a funding transaction, which should be published on chain at the moment of channel establishment. This funding transaction have a single input, uh, sorry, have multiple inputs uh, for each party who is funding the channel. Right now, uh, the current version of Lightning Network works only with a single party funding. So namely, here we will have a single input and it also, oh no, 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 I, I'm wrong. Uh, basically, this is a funding transaction. So we can have a multiple inputs because this part is controlled by the creator of the channel, uh, the funding party, he can just connect and assemble his coins. And he locks the amount for the channel in the first output. So this output is actually the channel uh, establishment output, the funding part. And the second 
usually there will be a second output present here and the second output uh, is the change because not always all the funds are going into the funding of the channel. Uh, the idea that this, uh, at the moment, when this funding transaction is created, if a party would like to add RGB assets to the channel, it also create off-chain state transition, defining this particular output as a to hold some state, namely amount of the assets the party would like to attribute to the channel. And commitment to this amount should be placed in the same funding transaction because here is inputs, we will have the transactions with this uh, state. It is advised scheme. However, from the security perspective, other schemes are possible. Uh, this commitment may result, for instance, uh, I will draw on the dashboard. Let's assume I am Alice and I would like to fund the channel. I do have a transaction holding some bitcoins in the output I would like to use to this channel. I also do own some other output, unspent output in some other transaction which has USDT attached and the seal, one of these outputs, is defined as a seal hold, holding this USDT. At the moment, when I do create a funding transaction, I needed to have these two inputs. One input providing bitcoins for the channel, the second input providing USDT for the channel. Of course, it could be the same input. For instance, I do have sufficient balance here, but it will be just one of the cases. For the most of the cases, I will probably fund from different channels because usually outputs containing uh, RGB will be not allocated a lot of Bitcoins because they usually dedicated for this reason. But it's not a limitation of the protocol itself. So now I have this transaction spending the uh, state, the, the seal. So I need to close over the no new state uh, and to commit to this new state into the funding transaction. And I would have just a single first output required for the channel operation. And this output is paid to, uh, pay to witness script hash output because it's basically multi-seq. Well, I can commit into the multi-seq output with the new developments because the original design came when we uh, didn't allow a commitment to the script outputs. But it is still advisable that I create a, some change to myself, so I will allocate a little bit more funds uh, to the channel. So I put here my public key and I tweak this public key with the commitment to this new state, which will define the first output as a CL with the attached state in USD tether. So the same funding output, which locks Bitcoins under the multi-seq, will lock the state under the multi-seq. And this amount of assets will enter the channel together with Bitcoins. Which one? This is the seal, this is commitment. 
commitment to the state which defines the zero output as a seal. Mm -hmm. That's that's an important point to distinguish between commitment and the seal itself. It's different stuff. In case of lightning, each transaction will contain both. In case outside of lightning, we may have them in different transactions. But for the secu security model of lightning, we have no other option than have them each in uh, in the com in the inside the transa same transaction. Yeah. I didn't understand. The, the point is that this transaction, to have an asset in it, need to spend output containing an asset. There is no other way. Uh, oh, no, no. No. I, I'm a bit tired. I'm, I'm really sorry. It doesn't have to. I need to spend this output somewhere else, possibly. Yeah. And, the fi and then there will be a... Uh, uh, commitment, but the seal, so what we have as a strict, uh, strict requirement is that we need, if we would like to have an asset inside the channel, it should be the first output of the funding transaction should be defined as a seal. But the commitment to that fact can be either inside the funding transaction, if it spans the output containing the source of funds, or inside other transaction, if the source of funds spent by the other transaction. So the second option here. That some other transaction spends this output. And then this other transaction will contain a commitment to this state. So these are two variants. Nothing will, cha will change. But when the asset, is not bound to the asset is bound to here oh. because it is a seal. The seal is, seal is bi binding the asset. The How you define the seal? It's think of commitment as a timestamp. So, you have off-chain data, once again. Off-chain data define, like I said, CL number one is this transaction ID and this output number. In this case, it will be funding transaction ID and zero. This is a CL definition. It is off-chain. There is no place in the transaction where we can put this information. So what we are doing, we pass this state with the seal definition through all our algorithms that we were discussing yesterday. We create from here a tweaking factor, which is basically a commitment to this seal. And now we need to commit by actually adding this tweaking factor to some public key. Commitment. It does. It means nothing. At all. No. It can be still. Li it's independent. It's there for error. You have to define. Yes, yes. Inside that transaction. So we, the place of this commitment is defined deterministically. So the transaction spending previous seal must have this commitment. While 
the place of the seal is not defined deterministically. We do it arbitrary. So with that funding transaction, we have these two options that either we do have a change output and commit to this new state into the change output, or we spend the asset by some other transaction and commit to this seal, to the funding output with some external transaction. Okay, this part is done. The easiest one. Now, we have a asymmetrical pair of the commitment transactions, which are partially signed and off-chain at this stage. I am showing one of these pairs. We do have the local peer owner, and it is a red color, and the remote peer, which is a blue color. And this is the public key, this is a signature, and this is place for the signatures, because it's partially signed, it means that this signature is absent. Uh, so this transaction is created by red player, le le red party, so it doesn't have the signature of this party, it has the signature of the remote party. And this commitment transaction has just two outputs, named two local and two remote. We are analyzing this part because after that we will have outputs for multi-hop HTLC, not only multi-hop but HTLC outputs, and it will be the other part of the analysis. So we are now talking only about two local and two remote. These two outputs, the balance in Bitcoin of these two outputs reflects the actual settlement of the channel, meaning how much of the funds are allocated to the remote party, blue color, the second output, and how much funds are allocated to the local party, first output, zero output, and red color. That's clear, right? There are scripting conditions for the first output, zero output namely, and just a public key requirement for the second output to remote. This transaction spans this funding output from the funding transaction, this one. So, because it spans the seal, it must close to the seal of a new state. And it means that the commitment to the state must be placed into the commitment transaction. Right now, we have a pay to witness uh, public key hash output. It is the first output to remote. We just have a public key of the other peer. Later, it will be replaced with additional uh, locking condition and become a script output. But this script output will still contain, contain only a single public key of the remote party. So it is proposed to put the commitment to the new state into this first output. And this state will define how much of the asset is allocated to the local party and to the remote. And will define two seals for each of these two output, one for each of these two outputs. And the first seal, zero seal, will define how much of the asset uh, is owned by the local party and how much of the asset uh, is owned by the remote party. So now we have the first output to contain both commitment and the seal. Right, that's, that's pretty straightforward. Why must the house be made uh, uh, Because uh, right now, uh, when you would like to close the channel, uh, the, the, the point is that this party gets the fund instantly if this transaction is published. Mm -hmm. This party, local party, gets the fund with a delay. So if this party would like to publish the transaction, it will ge get the funds later. So the party who initializes the closing of the channel yes. receives the funds later. And this is distortions of incentives, and it is a proposal 
to add here a uh, time lock to make the same, to make them to receive the funds at the same time. And it is being accepted by the Lightning uh, Network Working Group. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, it was even discussed on their Lightning conference on that meeting. But originally, it I was told by this uh, about this by Christian Decker, so they they have planned that. Now I don't. I'm not sure that it's already in the specifications, but there is clearly. No, 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 no. It's Lightning specific. Okay. Uh, it was, but 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 the point was, the original RGB concept was just get rid of complexity and commit into public key out pu public uh, key outputs only. Just not bother with the scripts because at that moment we will need all this deterministicity to define which scripts which keys are used. We need to attach the regional script source and all that crazy stuff. But it happens that after change this change, there would be no public key in the commitment, public key outputs in the commitment transaction. And also we already don't have a public keys in the HTLC transactions. So we have no other option than to create a standards which will allow us to commit into the script outputs as well. And that's why we need to add this complexity, which without lightning would be unnecessary. Okay, so let's move to the, mm, to the HTLC part. The HTLC part consists of the outputs in the commitment transaction and additional partially signed transactions, which spans these outputs. So each of these HTLC transactions spent uh, corresponding output, and per each HTLC operation, a new pair of outputs and new pair of partially signed transactions is added into the channel. So there could be multiple multiples of this inside the channel. Mm -hmm. We will discuss the single set of these transactions because if you have multiple, you have the same situation with each of them. Uh, the first HTLC output defines a situation when a timeout is happening. Uh, oh, no, no. This is offered HTLCs and this is received HTLCs. So the HTLCs that I have sent and the HTLCs that I have received. And there are three conditions, spending conditions, for each of them by penalty, by timeout, and by the reveal of the and the same is here by penalty, by timeout, and by the reveal by, by revealing the original pre image. Uh, with the offered HTLCs, I am allocating funds to the remote party. With the received HTLCs, fun, uh, HTLCs uh, I allocate funds to myself, and these funds are substituted from this. So whenever you take some bitcoins into HTLCs, you reduce the amount here. So when I add funds to myself into HTLC, I reduce to remote amount. And I just create a new version of transaction containing these outputs and new balances. The same happens to their RGB state. So together with a commitment transaction, I do create a new version of state, defining all the seals, so another pair of seals per each HTLC. And uh, I will just, the same way I rebalance bitcoins, I do rebalance assets. Because uh, we use multi-hop payments for asset transfers. Okay, so you want to transfer the assets. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you transfer if you transfer Bitcoin, you just remain the old state. Well, you create new state with the old balances, new transaction outputs because transaction ID is changed. So you still define a new state. Yeah, but I mean, it's the same no, the state is the singular. It covers all the list of the seals. 
So the state lists the seals. And these seals are within commitment transaction. Because the commitment transaction is being updated, the transaction ID is changing. So we create a new, we serialize a new state, we get a digest of it, and we commit to this state into the transaction output. In this public key tweaking. Uh, also, together with these two outputs, the commitment transaction, uh, the outgoing and incoming HTLCs also include a new version of the a partially signed transaction for the timeout and success case. So if we, you send HTLC, you create a HTLC timeout transaction signed by yourself, strange. And uh, each time you receive HTLC, you have a success transaction signed by the other party. Uh, is this required one because it's signed by myself? But I need to pass the signature to the other party. Yeah, so this, this transaction is inside, uh, it's a symmetrical situation. So the remote peer has this transaction and the local peer has this transaction. Yeah. Uh, they are pretty much the same because each of them has also, by penalty and by delay, uh, output with a time lock and with a just derived key. Uh, by penalty is always used when you publish not the r most recent version of the uh, st state transactions. Uh, and again, because this transaction spans the seal, we, might, we must commit to the new state within these transactions. And we do that, uh, in this case, it's not displayed here, but with our new protocol, we have to tweak both of these keys, local and remote, remote because we have a grid inside the scripts, we tweak all the public keys. The same message. Well, well one per transaction. Here we have one message, here we have the other message. And this new state allocates all the funds, assets from here to here. That's all. And they can be taken either by, by the party who can take the, the bitcoins from this transaction, basically. So that's all for the transaction structure. So now how it works, it's a, a large picture of all the transactions. So if I publish, if I close the ch state, uh, the channel, I already have the proper state allocating both Bitcoins and assets. And there could be multiple assets as well because you have this state defining multiple assets. Uh, if a previous state will be published by one of the party, the other party will publish penalty transactions, spending, this output, so the party takes this output to remote anyway, the other party, then it takes this output, all the funds from the channel, namely. Then for each HTLC uh, output, it takes by penalty and by penalty. So, uh, and also, yeah, it takes this by penalty because it has this transaction signed and output that can be spent by it. So it takes all the funds from the channel, meaning that it also takes all the assets from the channel with a penalty mechanism. So can we use client validated state over lightning network? Yes, we just need to embed commitments into the witness script hash output. We have done that and later taproot when it will be adopted. So we have already solved this problem. We need to embed new data into messaging protocol. We can do that with the TLV extensions, and I will be covering it later. We can negotiate state 
including on the channel on opening, which assets are added. We can do that, announce that with local feature bits and mess till we message extensions on the channel establishment. We can find a way to publish information on the balances with gossip protocol to allow multi-hop payments in the assets. We can do that with adding TLV extensions to gossip messages, but they are not there yet. Capacities. And uh, we don't need any changes for the routing and state restoration at all. I mean, if the wrong state version is being published. However, there is still some set of the potential problems, uh, which we have a solution for them, the first. Uh, it is really hard to integrate the required functionality into existing Lightning Node software. No proper extensions mechanics, because we need basically what we need. At transaction level, we have to tweak public keys. <laughs> we have to tweak public keys, which are generated by a local party. So the Lightning Node should send the public key each time to some extension, extension will tweak it with a new cha state change, return to the Lightning node, and it must include into the transaction. Uh, the second, we have to redo the new version of the state for all of the transactions, and uh, we also need to pass the information from the Lightning node to the extension on all TLB extensions related to the RGB that are coming to this node. Right now, none of the existing node implementations by their architectural limitations do not allow to do that. Uh, we have a few options to solve that. We can fork Lightning Node and do a custom Lightning Node with RGB support, but while it's possible to do, the main cost will be the cost of maintenance of the fork because we need to rebase all the new functionality, uh, all the changes in the Lightning Network over our version constantly. We can do our own node implementation. However, it have even higher cost of implementation. And unlike the fork, we can't rebase from somewhere else all the new things that happens in Lightning. But we will have, it will be easier to be heard in the Lightning community when you have a node implementation and you have required some specific uh, direction of the further protocol development. We can make an extension standard saying this, because this functionality will be required not only by RGB, but I assume uh, other uh, layer three solutions. So we will propose that we need to be able to tweak protocol at these levels. Here is levels, here is extension API standard, and let's have all nodes implementing it. Well, it's the best way. Uh, it has very high uh, communication, and it is the lo longest process, because you have to synchronize all the developers and all node implementations to do the same standard, which is hard to do. Or we can partner with existing node development company, one of these teams, and make our way into the Lightning node architecture through them. Yeah. So the solution that we have, have found so far is uh, partner with existing uh, C Lightning team. We already have discussed them. Uh, actually, uh, Christian Decker, was very open to help with that and we the most of material i presented today actually have appeared as a result of our discussions with him starting from lightning standards both problems especially the first part up to the potential solutions to them and at the same time we planned uh, to do a better standard stack as i already have said uh, some sort of more formalized standardization process, which will be running in, not in parallel with, with bolts, but digest bolts into the stable version of formal standards, uh, which is basically another solution to another problem. 
if the animation takes time. Yeah, so we will work on the more standardized version of Lightning Network. And there are all other multiple problems. Uh, all the new updates that we were discussing in the first part that are coming to the Lightning Network, we have to be ready to them. And this slide summarizes uh, our readiness state. So we already read the, two, the change of two remote address. We are at high risk with the changes in gossip protocols the because they will probably significantly reduce the network traffic, leaving us less space to announce different information or add and attach different information to gossip messages. It is not still clear what changes could be there, so it's hard to predict what will happen next. Uh, changes in the routing protocols. We can't estimate this risk. And uh, for instance, when we plan to do a trampoline, we are probably at high risk because this trampoline nodes has to be an RGB enabled nodes. Otherwise, even if the in the network there are RGB enabled nodes, but not trampoline, we will fail the whole routing. We are ready for Schnorr taproot for DLS, for LT, no changes required uh, uh, there. And L2 actually, because with, uh, uh, with Lightning Network, we need to maintain not only the history of all previous signatures for the transactions and balances, but we also need to maintain all state updates, because if the older state update is published, we need to also be able to penalize that. No, we don't need to send them because it's off-chain. So if the commitment transaction haven't gone on chain, it is the most recent transaction. But if somebody published the previous version of the commitment transaction to penalize this party, we both need the transaction history after this transaction and state history after the transaction to publish on chain. Yeah, you don't need. Just from funding transaction. Yeah. And with L2, we don't need even to maintain the local history of the state chain, as well as don't need to maintain the local history of transactions in the state. That will be the part of the messaging protocol. I, I'm after I'm going to that. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to it after this slide. Yeah. No, no, no. But if the two th so, uh, in direct payments, not multi-hop payment scheme, both nodes has to support RGB in order to have RGB assets added to the channel meaning that they will both tweak the public key in the same deterministic weight with the same new state, because the state is also deterministic. So they just negotiate a balance, nothing more, additional to Bitcoin balance. And this ba balance is going into till the extension of the uh, state update uh, messages. You have how it puts. You just, just yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so building components. Uh, this is analysis. What we need from Lightning Network, basically, uh, some parts of what we are designing. Uh, can be done without Lightning Network at all. So we can do cryptographic commitment and client-side validation protocols as we discussed throughout the first two days. But some parts 
Uh, so they are remain the same under the Lightning Network. Nothing changes. But some two parts has to be developed specifically to the Lightning Network, which is uh, any unrouted P2P messaging and network-wide gossips and state updates. So we have to develop additionally for Lightning Network the protocols for embedding the information into the network messaging. So how it happens? M may have like five minute break before the, this messaging part. Okay, maybe let's, other, if you have other questions than messaging, let's discuss them regarding the transaction structure and outputs. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right, I mean, you, there's compatibility issues like which lightning nodes support which software. But it's done with the feature flags anyway. Yeah, I understand. But, but I mean, you also mentioned a lot of risks that are put in the development of lightning. Yeah. I was just making like a lightning network for RGB sources in itself. Well, what, what keeps against that? I mean, it seems actually trickier. Uh, I would differentiate two issues. The first issue, I would like the protocol to be technically able to be integrated in the same Lightning Network. But it's not the same anyway because the update the Lightning Network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I we, we would like not to have any incompatibilities. Uh, I mean, at the level of transaction structure of everything like that. And even for future Lightning Network upgrades. It seems that we are at this stage. Now, in terms of how to actually bootstrap uh, the assets, RGB assets over the Lightning Network, creation of different Lightning Network is an option. But technically, we do have freedom of choice between the options. So I wouldn't say that there is some decision how to launch the actual RGB assets in the Lightning Network yet. But you so see, what I'm saying yeah. is these, these payment channels would already be completely compatible with everything that is on Lightning right now, but the underlying asset would be completely different then. And these payment channels could basically be maintained in the RGB way, they could be interconnected for like an RGB network, but they would be compatible with Lightning, which runs over Bitcoin. But, but uh, what, what do you mean by compatibility? So, in practical sense, what it will mean that they are compatible. They wouldn't open the channels with a... So, so, so they can be launched over the gossip protocol, but you can launch through them as, as long as you know the correct storage of them. That's the point. Because, I mean, when, when, when you do the routing, you create an onion. So you can create the onion on the first channel sending Bitcoin, sending that on the second channel, and sending actually USDT on the first channel and sending Bitcoin again. So you mean it will be... By different Lightning Network product, uh, Lightning Network, you mean different set of channels, yeah. not the channel connect, not the node connections. But it, it still will be the same Lightning Network, just a different, diff different set of the channels. Yeah. Would it be less private? Well, still, if you announce the channel, you announce the assets, or you just don't announce it. Yes. I think that's uh, that's an uh, interesting option to consider. It seems so much easier to, for maintaining. 
but in which point it is easier? So it will be the same. We have to modify the Lightning Node software still to add the RGB functionality. We can't. It means that we have more development resources than the Lightning Network has. But why these channels shouldn't contain bitcoins? Okay, but the, to have the nodes that are able to accept both of the channels, we need still to embed RGB functionality into existing nodes. That, that, that's a good option to consider. Because we, we haven't thought about that. <laughs> Okay, now probably I will describe the, the other version of how it can be done by just modifying. Well, not modifying. We have everything in place. So we don't have TLV extension in gossips. Well, we may have them. Nothing stops us from having it. But we are not quite sure that these gossips will be propagated with the actual software on the nodes that do not support RGB. So it's we can uh, find that only by experimenting. There is no other way. Because the specs has says nothing about that yet. And again, tomorrow they may say something like prohibit till the extensions to gossips because of the traffic or allow. So we just don't know that part. And uh, of course, if there will be a significant changes in the gossip routing protocols uh, like trampoline, again, it may, it may, it may break the story. Uh, nevertheless, what we can do today is we can announce support uh, for RGB using local and global features in init message and uh, using a gossip protocol. Uh, I will be later saying how exactly it can be done. Uh, we also need to list the supported assets and we can do that. Name the Genesis states as we just discussed, uh, we are both init message and we are state uh, node and channel announcement messages in gossip protocol. We need TLB, not TLB, TLB extensions to allow in go to be allowed in gossip. Uh, we can already utilize TLB extensions for data transfer in peer and onion routed messages. They are there. TLV. Uh, TLV is... Uh, Type length value encoding. Ah, uh, it's it's typo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and.
and uh, we still need to transfer large off-chain data proofs and I don't think that the Lightning Network itself, while theoretically we can transfer as much as we need, so we can introduce a new message type uh, between the nodes that support RGB, we can announce it again with a feature flag and we can use this uh, message type for messaging, basically splitting the proofs into messages and sending them over. It is one of the ways, but still we have to transmit the same proofs for non-lightning uh, clients and we will have a protocol for wire transfer. So we will probably just provide the information inside the lightning that we need this connection, connection string like to the node and uh, the lightning node will just establish a connection, a P2P connection to receive those proofs from the proofs provider. By this we can even store the off-chain proofs on different server or delegate it to some different party to maintain the proof history. Uh, even it can be used with watchtowers, for instance, if they will be enabling, if th they will be there and <laughs> enabling uh, RGB support. Uh, the operations of the RGB enabled channel will be the following. Upon establishing connection, we will include uh, into the init message a uh, feature, feature bits indicating the support for RGB and other type of, the, sorry. Uh, if the remote node supports uh, client validated state, <laughs> I was really tired when I was preparing these slides. Uh, it will be, it will connect over the dedicated link to receive state history information for validation. The node should persist the information with which, uh, on which states are supported by their connected peers, even if they are not used in the actual channel. And if the node starts supporting a new state history routes, uh, it, I mean genetic states, uh, state, it must close and reopen its connections. Sorry? Uh, I think it should just do a node announcement, a different node announcement. But node announcement is the part of the goal SIP and we can't send it. Do we, can we send another init message to the, so we, we have a, like, yeah. you just need to send another message, so yes, reopen connection, close and reopen the connection. Not the channel, the connection. For establishment and updates, we will use the following message init at rgb, uh, odd rgb feature uh, flag, feature bit. Uh, so we wouldn't fail if the other node is uh, not supporting rgb, we will just fail back to Bitcoin protocol. Open channel, we add the still the uh, extended data section with the list of uh, genesis state client validation protocol. Oh, it's just all the abbreviations. So client validated state. Uh, client validated state genesis states and the node uh, that the node plans to include into the channel. Uh, we will include the most recent state, I mean the balance of the assets. Uh, we will provide connection details for transferring the proofs, this connection string, because the actual proof history to validate will be after this transferred outside of the Lightning Network connection. And the remote party must decline the channel if it contains any genesis states that it is no, that are not supported by it. Or if the proofs wasn't valid and it founds that the actual, actually the remote party doesn't own this uh, state. Uh, in the accept channel, we will just reflect the same structure back to confirming the acceptance of everything. It is the same way it works for Bitcoin part. Uh, there are no additional information I is required in the funding created, funding signed and funding locked message because No, 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 it's deterministically reconstructed. Okay. So I know that you allocate to this um, uh, to this channel a thousand dollars. So I, c I just do a state proof. I know the transaction ID yeah. so I can, can yeah, 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 yeah. I just need support for the protocol. Because then again, I don't know if this is the same, maybe I'm not sure, yeah. 
this is for the case if we will have a separate channel for bitcoins and for assets. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What I'm saying is, you could also always stay with the original automated capturing messages, but then it's also the RDB state. Or will it, yeah. No, the node will close collection if it receives a LV that it doesn't understand, as far as I know. But then I need to introduce it. Yeah. And here I can just use existing one. But I know that it doesn't understand, so I wouldn't send it. Um, and uh, for update add HTLC message, uh, again, tell the extension with the information on the new balance, basically, of the channel, which I will allow to deterministically reconstruct what we need. No. No, no, but for a local payment, for instance. The yes, yes. And so even the onion comes even for a local update because it wasn't cl clear for me this part. Ah, it would be nice if the specification would be saying something about that directly. <laughs> yeah, you, you do that through HTLC, yeah. Yeah. So not another any onion, but I modify the onion with the TLV fields. Okay, I will I will write the section points. All, all of your considerations. Let's not for to forget up to that. So, the first one is to uh, separate RGB channels. That was your first suggestion. The second suggestion uh, is this: is just include new balance into onion and don't modify update at HTLC. Uh, was there anything else? No. Not yet so far. Okay. I mean there was something else that we need that Oh, okay. <laughs> With the gossip protocol, uh, node announcement and channel announcement messages should contain feature bits for sure, and till the extension listing supported Genesis states. Channel updates should contain till the extensions with updated listing for the supported Genesis states, meaning that something was added or removed, uh, and the fees. Uh, all the fees will be still taken not in the asset, but in Satoshi's, just to simplify the things. So if I transfer... But that doesn't simplify, that makes it more complex. Why? Because the fees are still with the original part of the onion. Ah, I with this it makes it more, yeah. No, but it's one more, because now you have to send out two onions, one onion for the fees and one onion for the asset. Mm -hmm. So the onion, you have the same balance of the yeah. so, so 
But we need to announce the fees, meaning that uh, we can do that with a channel update, adding that to till the extension, the announcement for the fees for each of the assets. So together with the supported Genesis state, we provide a fee for each of them, for each type of these sta uh, Genesis states, meaning a type of the asset, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we are listing assets, and for each like a um, hash map, we saying that this is idea of the asset, the fee idea, and the fee idea. And is it it? Percent. Yeah. But why do we need separate fees then? Uh, has introduced. But meaning that we still need to then set a base fee for each of the assets. Right, so we will be. The site on base fee rate either uh, make it zero or uh, or include per asset into channel update. If you announce it, you announce it. <laughs> yeah, sure, but you just can't forward payments within the private channel. Uh, the question regarding the why not to have a separate channels for RGB and Bitcoins, well, basically it increases the amount of on-chain transactions, so you need to do funding transaction per each channel, publish it on-chain, so... Once again, C can you have the m microphone? Maybe we could use the concept of uh, virtual channel. So the concept to build a logical channel. A logical, logical, yeah, logical channel to do not change the gossip protocol and. Uh, use a gossip message for each uh, asset and the five assets by the so blockchain ID. Mm, uh, I don't, uh, it's hard for me to uh, imagine how it can be done. 
Yeah, if I understand can, can, you draw, can, can you draw it, for instance, maybe? Do you understand the idea? If I understand a uh, uh, gossip message as a, um, as a blockchain ID to um, the parameter that you use to distinguish Bitcoin channel from like the coin channels, for example, right? Yeah, so the gossip message, the update channel message, gives okay. metadata. Like how many HTLCs are accepted in this channel? What is the fees for the payments on the channel? Stuff like that. What's your suggestion now? See, you to use a... Ah, okay, different methods. To use different messages in order to... A different message, a message per asset type, basically. Yeah. The, the, the last point that we have written. So okay. consider having channel update message specific to an asset type. So for each asset, we do a channel update. Uh, is it what you are con uh, suggesting? Ah, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's basically what we just included. Okay. Uh, it seems like that's all for the gossip protocol. I I I, I haven't looked into the qu 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 querying part, uh, filters and that stuff. Do we need to do something there? I don't think so. I mean, the querying and filtering is just to propagate the gossip information. So, I mean, the question was, in the beginning, you would just download all the gossip messages from somebody. Mm -hmm. But then if a big lightning node with a lot of channels go down, it's like a lot of yeah. traffic that is being just like resynced. So I think with the filtering and querying, that shouldn't influence it. I think that is something that I think can be reused. Okay. Hopefully. Okay. And the last part of this section is uh, onion messaging. One, one thing that could happen is, of course, if you introduce an update message, update channel message for every asset type, then of course it depends on whether nodes support these different types of messages. Well, I mean, in the gossip protocol, they should be propagated over the entire network, right? Yes, so what that's the whole idea. They so wouldn't so be propagated. So if you introduce a new message, that might also have an impact on filtering and querying for them. Yeah. So, so that might be... So you mean by uh, have an update message uh, per asset, you mean a new type of update message? You know, a, ty a new type of no. gossip message. Or you mean you the same type, but different, you point just to different uh, Yes, yeah, so ID. currently, currently, I think, uh, because L we just assume that there's one asset in one channel, Yeah. it doesn't matter. The update message just gives some information for that particular asset in that channel. But now if you have several assets, you need to probably change the update message to specify inside which asset is it that I'm up doing the update now. But alternatively, we can have a TLV section with an array of the same yeah, data. Yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying is this is a different message type. Why? Right? It's, it's, it's not the update message that we currently use for Bitcoin. And that might have an impact on filtering and querying. Well, again, it, it comes... also need to be propagated. It comes, it comes down what will happen if a node, which is not supporting RGB, will receive a gossip message of known type, but with a TLV extension. We just don't know, because specification doesn't say anything about that. So we should, uh, we should experiment and find out what they will propagate, actually. G known messages with... Uh, additional TLV or unknown messages without TLV. So we, we have to find that in an experimental way. Seems so. <laughs> Regarding the onion messaging, extra information for the receiver is included in form of TLV extension. Intermediate nodes will not need to support RGB uh, since they will not see the actual packet with this extra data, right? And those who support, they will have extra data in the Onion packet. What do you mean to the end message? Like the final... I mean the, f the, 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 the actual party who supports RGB and... Basically, with, within the Onion packet, you when you construct, 
original packet to send it over the network. You construct it in such a way for each node that supports RGB, you add a tilde field with the necessary information. For those who don't, you just don't. Are you aware of the Perun network? I am aware of existing of Perun network, but uh, I don't know all the technical details. So a concept that they um, introduce is, uh, and I use the name the same name in a different context, so it's a name confusion, but they name it um, virtual payment channels. And what it basically does is it allows you to open a circuit between you and me over the network by locking up a lot of HTLCs along the path for a longer time. So now you and me can basically, like we would have a payment channel, transact funds all the time and then later when we decide to close this virtual channel we can settle. The reason why I'm mentioning this is, is um, currently you have a problem when you, when you want to send out an onion. So let's say I have a channel with somebody that supports USDT, you have a channel with somebody that supports USDT and I choose a path through the network from my channel to your channel but in between there is no channels that support USDT. How would you do that? You don't. You would. This is spectrum. Yes. Yes. Okay. This is one solution, but there yeah. might be, but there might be a different solution. Mm -hmm. Actually, the different solution might be to use these virtual channels. Because basically, I only need to have, like, if I send USDT to Max, and then the onion goes some way. It doesn't matter actually that there's just some Bitcoin fees being transported. They can still forward the information and then it enters at Olga. And mm -hmm. if Max and Olga would have this virtual channel mm -hmm. that connects them over U USDT, even though no physical channel between them exists, they could right. still use the onion transport. So it's, it's basically so virtual. It's I, I got the concept, but basically you need to log the HTLC all along the path and something is changes like some of the channels are yes you need to you, you need to lock some funds but the interesting thing is since in the case for rgb it's not bound to a lot of liquidity right you just need to basically lock a dust amount yeah in the htlc because what's really being interesting is sending over the yeah, yeah. but but I, I'm not saying that it's a liquidity problem. It's the problem of uh, tho all those channels just not to close or disappear. Yeah, sure. If a channel disappears, then the virtual channel breaks. Oh, at least one of the channels. Yes, but I mean, that's the assumption of Lightning anyway, that channels stay open. No, for virtual channel, you need to stay. For Lightning, they need to stay open for a short time. But if you have a virtual channel, they have to be for the whole channel type. Channel type. So it's more, more strict. But let's let I will add that so consider virtual channels. Yeah well let's call them Peru channels because the virtual channel name is not Okay, that's all for this part. The next part will be spectrum and solving liquidity issues. Uh, and I propose to do it after the lunch break. So uh, the last uh, three parts for today, we will probably make a break in the middle. Uh, the first of them is the spectrum. What is the spectrum? The spectrum is the protocol for well, you can put it in different way for liquidity in assets over the Lightning Network because uh, even today with Lightning Network, it's hard to find a route with the liquidity in Bitcoins. And when we have a multiple assets, it will be even harder to find the routes that where each of the nodes does have all the does have the required asset to uh, you attempt to transfer. From the other side, if we will think about RGB as a, not just an asset protocol, but as a client validated state protocol where the state may be not just an asset but something bigger, uh, the spectrum is actually an efficient 
state exchange protocol or state interoperability protocol, which we can utilize to simultaneously and synchronously update different states coming from different Genesis uh, blocks. And this can be done only over the Lightning network. So in the third way, the spectrum is the decentralized exchange made right because it's natively decentralized, operating on top of the Lightning Network, no additional tokens or coins for running it, and there is no central party that controls it. So how it looks? Let's assume that we have two nodes. I didn't name them, but on the left side, the node on the left side, Alice, would like to transfer USD Tether of the RGB to the node on the right side, Bob. But throughout the whole Lightning Network, there is no, pa no pass where each of the nodes will have USD Tether. They don't announce, they don't have it. We don't, we don't know, we can't put it out. But the Spectrum protocol, uh, there could be liquidity providers which announce that they are ready to do exchange in the, this direction from USDT to Bitcoins or from Bitcoins to USD Tether. And now we see that we have a path, we just need a single channel to liquidity provider for Alice and single channel with liquidity provider for Bob. And we can use on the rest of the route just a normal Bitcoin transfers. So when I, Alice sends use the tether, the liquidity provider does the exchange and forwards only Bitcoin payment until it meets the next liquidity provider paying to Bob. That is the bottom line idea behind the spectrum. Uh, it, it uses gossip protocol to, for defining the ask and bid price information. Uh, there are liquidity providers that allow these multi-hop payments. And basically, you can think about that as a new monetization model for Lightning Network nodes. Because for now, they can be actually a traders and liquidity providers owning, earning a commission on the difference of bid and ask prices. Uh, it is a decentralized secondary ma market for shares. Kind of NASDAQ, if you bring a, enough corporate shares into the Lightning Network, you may build a NASDAQ type exchange in a decentralized way. And the most important part, it breaks Lightning Network transaction analysis even by monitoring traffic, uh, the core assumption that you can see the balances and you can assume the transfers. Here, part of the route you have in one asset and the other part in the other. So it complexifies this analysis. Uh, we will announce, so that spectrum is a protocol independent from RGB, but in ca it can work only if the RGB is present and uh, enabled. So the nodes should independently announce support for spectrum with another odd feature flag. Uh, they should announce pairs of supported Genesis states and bid ask prices in gossip messages. Sender should construct the route taking into account this information and requirements for exchanges should be embedded into the Onion message packet and read by Spectrum enabled nodes. That's pretty much simple. Uh, it basically requires no changes to NL other than Lightning Network other than just allowing TLV extensions in gossip protocols and making sure that the gossip works as expected. We have this still, we have this uh, reverse American call option, which is not specific to RGB, uh, to Spectrum, but also to RGB. Tomorrow, the Spectrum may be also broken on Trump Align or new gossip protocol limitations, as well as RGB, but for now, it should be working. Well, I, I, I don't know all the technical details, but I can assume that theoretically, on the way they are designing, if you don't have Trump Align nodes, being spectrum enabled and RGB enabled, they will just, you wouldn't be able to use them to compute the root. Mm -hmm. How do you see, think it could work? So, I mean, the, 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 the real problem is the exchange rate. Right, so if you go back to the example that you had where you have your unnamed nodes, right, 
So you have two exchange points basically. Mm -hmm. And the problem is how do you know the exchange rate? I mean, you ask them beforehand, right? Maybe over gossip that takes a long of time. Maybe you can query them directly. It doesn't have to be defined. But then you create the onion. And in the onion, you first send USDT, and then the next stop, you send Bitcoin and so on. And then later on, you send USDT again. Right. So that has to respect the exchange rate. While the onion is being propagated, the exchange rate could already change. So this is an issue, right? Yes. So what you want to do is basically with trampoline, you could basically say, I'm going from Alice to the exchange, then I'm going to the next exchange, and then I'm going back to Bob. And the exchange, the first one, would then have the freedom to find a path to the second exchange with trampolines. So but uh, what trampolines that do is they don't specify the entire path anymore. Yeah, but they have to be spectrum aware. Well, the exchange is going to be spectrum aware anyway, because yes, the yes so the exchange will also be trampoline aware. What I'm saying is uh -huh. it's actually good if the exchanges speak trampoline because they don't have to think about the you, you, you only say I want to like make a payment through these exchanges and let the exchange wonder about how to actually find a path with liquidity in the underlying asset. So 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 trampoline is actually an, a huge advantage for your use case and not a a deal breaker. So basically, we don't, uh, we shouldn't think about trampoline nodes to be spectrum enabled. We should think about spectrum enabled exchange to be also a trampoline nodes, right? And then that case, we don't worry about other trampoline nodes which are spectrum. And for everything underwear. else, it doesn't matter because yeah. it's just like routing in the onions. Yeah. Okay. That 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 is a good point. So yeah, we are happy that one point is going out we are happy then <laughs> it's all can be done uh, so at the end of the day even with all this new information that we don't need to change the lightning network protocol we can do everything the only main challenge is to build the software that covers all the additional functionality and integrates with lightning nodes so the next section would be on how we can build software both in Lightning Network part and in just generic RGB specific part. Yeah. Yeah. A problem that yeah on this part. Uh, so I think like okay we I I want to do this USD uh, transaction over the Lightning Network so I have to find two exchanges like uh, on the both sides of the route uh, but this is like a valid use case only assuming that uh, I mean the first uh, exchange would probably be like me if I also have bitcoins so the, f the first person in, in, in the path to mm -hmm. to do this exchange you used the bitcoin so I feel that I doing this it will end up that people just wouldn't use the token because the easiest way to, to find somebody to exchange it for Bitcoin is probably yourself, is if you also, also have Bitcoins. Well, w w maybe you wouldn't have Bitcoins. For instance, you could be a wallet, or a mobile wallet, RGB enabled, and you have just used the tether on it. Yeah, yeah, but... I don't that know. is the main case, and you need to pay to a merchant who also accepts to use the tether. And only accept the USD tether. And only use the tether so because doesn't want to play with volatility or something. So this works under the assumption that uh, uh, Bitcoin is not widely used. It, well, it works to solve when you need to pay due to some reason is you in USD tether, but there is okay. no sufficient liquidity, over the and you can't pa find the path with the liquidity. I don't know why you need to pay in the USD tether, but for instance, you may want to buy Apple shares. I would like to buy Apple shares from you. So I need Apple shares, not Bitcoin in this case. So that's the whole story. But no, this is if you want to pay me in Apple shares, so which yeah, to sell you Bitcoin, so to to sell you Apple shares, uh, I need to pay I you in Apple shares. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And you are paying back me in Bitcoin. So we're doing the trades, right. basically exchange, but we can't can't do that directly. Uh, yeah, I was just uh, okay. Yeah. 
but also another point could be that you just don't have sufficient liquidity. You have Bitcoin, but do you, so, to some reason, you don't want to reduce number of Bitcoins for something else. And because when you have a multiple assets, I think it could be even uh, easier to do le rebalancing, general rebalancing. So maybe Spectrum will be beneficial to this. I don't know. It's just a idea. But like, you mean people along the path may uh, like facilitate this transaction to rebalance their own channel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's a general like lightning network assumption. Yeah. yeah. But in Lightning, while you have a single asset, Bitcoin, it's hard to harder to rebalance when you can just uh, yeah, have another right. second asset and use it for accounting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You can even issue uh, I owe you Bitcoin asset. For rebalancing purpose? For rebalancing yeah. purpose. Yeah, but who will buy them? Sorry? Who will buy the IOU Bitcoin? Why? Wh why would somebody will buy them? Yeah. Because there will be some interest rate attached. Mm, okay, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, that counterparty risk discount, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And with the simplicity, you can make an interest rate on an asset, I think when we will have the scripting. Uh, yeah. uh, you need to know like all the uh, current owners to do that. No, no, no. Like your amount, you are not, the, your state is not amount, but the time function. Okay. Defined oh, okay. with simplicity. Oh, okay, okay, I see. So you, you have constant uh, inflation. Right, right. But right. it doesn't matter because that's the whole purpose. See. All these yeah, assets. That's interesting. Yes. Okay, software. I will start with the components that are designed under under auspicious of LNPBP association. Uh, they are all hosted in GitHub uh, of the association repository, and I will just run through projects. the The main project is uh, Core Library. It is a reference implementation for all LNPBP standards that we were discussing, and the parts that are not yet standards, but I was presenting them, they will become standards soon. Uh, codified, I mean, they are already defined in terms of slides, uh, schemes, and so on. We just need to write them down. Uh, and also, the point is that the reference implementation is just a part of the standard itself. So you either may think of, as, as of a standard as a textual description plus the code or as a code with embedded comments describing how actually it is expected to be working. So we can check the validity of one against other. Two side of the standard like a coin. Uh, the code uh, should have a strong test coverage, very detailed docs. Uh, it has to be built not only into the Rust library, but also into a WASM model, which is possible to do. For instance, today Rust Bitcoin already has a WASM version of the build. And it will be also linked with uh, C bindings, allowing to call the functions of the core Rust library from C, C++, Python, Go, Node.js, GVM-based languages, or maybe even for C Sharp, because I know that Wasabi probably will ne need this functionality. We can do also bindings from C Sharp to C Sharp from C, as I expect. I didn't check that, but... I assume so. Here is the Rust repository for this library. It was already rewritten a couple of times with the development of the specifications. Uh, the new version is just quite recent, so you're all welcome to look at it. The second component is a set of daemons, which I will be describing you later, uh, with a microser microservice architecture and zero message queue interprocess communications. And it will implement the complete set of Lightning Network and Bitcoin protocol and RGB protocols. Again, there will be a sep separate session on why we need to do that and how it can be done quite without a big effort. Then there will be a wallet wrappers uh, with WASM, JavaScript, Swift, and Kotlin uh, around LNPBP core library that can be used by the wallet. So the wallet shouldn't be implementing all these LNPBP standards themselves, writing the same procedures for public key tweaking, transaction modification, uh, client site validation, running simplicity code. It will be all in the core library. 
Then we will work on the schemata, this scheme of war, financial assets, collectionables, identities, releasing them one by one. Uh, so it will be easier to issue different type of RGB states. Uh, and uh, a simplicity core library, when we will deal with the simplicity language, of course it's not there yet, but the idea that we will have a set of smart contract script primitives planned, uh, maybe we will develop it together jointly with the Blockstream or use some set that they will create for the Liquid and Elements projects. Uh, we are also using the uh, core library, we're using a number of existing projects, mainly from Rust Bitcoin. Uh, it's an organization in GitHub. Again, you can look at GitHub Rust Bitcoin through the dash, written through the dash. Uh, we, our aim to use as much external dependencies, as less external as possible dependencies as possible. So right now they are limited to uh, libsecp 256, which is uh, actually a wrapper around C library, which is used by Bitcoin Core and everybody else. Uh, a zero knowledge proof version of the same library with bullet proofs and Patterson commitments, written by Andrew Palstra. Uh, Bitcoin hashes, which use the which has a standard implementation of all hash functions, thoroughly tested against the uh, many cases test case scenarios and test vectors, Rust Bitcoin library, Rust Lightning lab library, and the C Lightning itself. That's all for the dependencies. We also contribute to Bitcoin hashes, Rust Bitcoin and Rust libraries. So everything that can be done and be a beneficial part for the Bitcoin itself, we don't do that in the our co core lab library, but instead we are contributing to uh, underlying libraries. For instance, uh, with Andrew Paelstro, we discussed and decided that it would be good to differentiate different hashes into separate types. So you can't provide hash of one type, because you have the same 32 bytes for SHA-256 hash, and you can put it as a transaction ID or as a block header or as a script uh, hash or public key hash. Semantically, they are different, but at the byte level, they are not. And the idea was to separate them into different types so you can't just by occasion pass the wrong data. Uh, and it's, it, it requires significant refactoring of the library, and you can assume that you have to rewrite a lot of, uh, you have to change many pieces of code. So we have done that, for instance, at the level of Rust Bitcoin. And probably we will, I will ask to introduce the uh, scripting typing that we were discussing also as a part of Rust Bitcoin library. Uh, we would like to welcome a development of ex from external projects uh, of RGB enabled explorers. I don't think that the explorers will be of wide use because of the privacy of the client side validated state data, but due to different reasons, there might be assets or something that would like to publish the information about that and also the explorers are important for uh, developing the project to <laughs> test and debug the actual behavior of the assets over the network. Also a number of wallets has announced to uh, support um, RGB at the early stage. Uh, Part, partly they are developed by the contributors, financial computer to contributors and developers of uh, the RGB specification itself. Uh, and also Blue Wallet and Wasabi Wallet probably will also be joining this club. club. There is also another wallet that I, uh, me and my colleagues will be working on in our other company. Uh, we plan to name it the dark one, meaning that um, we will be focusing about messaging, but with the open standards and protocols, payment embedded in message and messaging, identity management, uh, assets, and we'll be looking to do the support for other protocols, layer three protocols, as soon as possible. Uh, also, we have uh, command line tools. We have designed this LBX, which I was describing the first day, during the first day. Uh, sort of Swiss knife implementation for all LNPBP operations. And uh, we welcome development of RGB and spectrum enabled lightning nodes. Mm. 
The plan is that we will fork C Lightning and the fork will be maintained in a way that all new C Lightning functionality can be easily rebased upon it with the purpose of merging the fork back into the main C Lightning branch after the release of RGB or if we will be able to create a common standard for confidential assets and RGB. Also, in cooperation with Chaincode, and now Wasabi also said that they are interested in that, we will work on the Rust-based Lightning node. And it will be highly interconnected with the C Lightning. I will describe how it will work all together. Here is the status for all of these contributors, com components and uh, contributors. So the core library, client, command line tool, and the daemons will be written in Rust. Wallet wrappers will be specific per platform. Uh, of course, we will use a schema language for set schema, a simplicity for simplicity, and uh, the, the wallets that I am involved in the development, the wallet will be done in Swift and Explorer is in JavaScript. We just forked the Explorer and name it Rainbow Explorer to add the uh, RGB specific information to the Explorer. And th here are people who contribute into the, the actual code and the repositories where the code can be found. While well, Rust Red language, we already discussed that. I wouldn't spend a lot of time on that. Uh, the libraries, the core library, in, r in the part related to client validated state will be structured in the blocks. Well, the main block is a client validated state graphs, the management of these structures. And on top of that, we will have a specific RGB asset library. So because the client validated state is too generic concept and the, mo the most common use case scenario will be to use it for assets. And there are some specific uh, utility where you can not just work with the generic state but more like asset specific, asset friendly API. So there will be a layer on top of more generic client side library uh, to do that. And the, and the subcomponents for the client validated state would be related to privacy, uh, managers, management of the uh, single use seals and schemata, and Lightning Network specific parts for Spectrum and for the messaging. Here, here is more detailed substructuring. For privacy, we will probably use mostly existing libraries, maybe writing some wrappers for them. And for sealed of chain state, we will have a separate block for schema, for single use seals, and this nested typing of the different embedded forms of commitments inside the transaction. And again, we will need components for different forms of light of, a, of providing TLV and reading and parsing TLV extensions from lightning messaging. Now I would like to cover uh, coder practices we are using in doing all of that components. Can I have the microphone, please? Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. I already named them and explained them yesterday. Now I would like to show how they actually work in the code. You remember that we have this special serialization type for the commitment. And the main guidelines for that was to have always a strictly defined types with the boundaries, no pointers, no lists, no arrays of undefinite size. And as an example, I'm demonstrating here a structure uh, that represents the commitment serialization for the state transition. We were discussing the structure of the state transition yesterday. And there will be a fixed length field for the number of defined seals. There will be a Merkle root of type Merkle root. Yes, it is hash, hash, but a specific type. 
there will be a list of seals organized as a fixed length array. And this is a generic type parameter coming from the definition of the structure, meaning that the transition, state transition, defining different number of seals will be different types. If you have five seals, it is a type of state transition with the five seals defined at the compiler le level, at the compile time, not at the runtime. And this means that this structure actually in memory represented as a single piece of the memory of fixed size always. And you always know the size of the structure. You can't overflow and you don't need to follow any pro pointers. You just ser serialize byte from byte from memory on disk or read it from disk or use it for hash function encryption. So you can easily send it from one process to the other without doing any complex conversions. And here, the seals, we are not uh, serializing the seals themselves. We serialize the hashes, hashes. There is no underlying data here. And this structure is extremely private because you can't guess any information from the structure other than the number of elements. This is a script hash, hash of the meta fields, hash of the state, seal hashes of the seals. Well, for the runtime purposes, the same script, uh, the same state transition will be represented in this form. We will reference and point to the commitment source data, that structure that I just sh have shown, and, then, and will contain a vector, meaning the array of variable size, which will actually hold the actual seals and the state associated with the metadata for those seals which are owned by this party. Only for the, not all the seals, but only that are owned because we don't have information about the rest of them. And the same we can optionally have simplicity script which may be absent or present. And this structure should be implementing two types of serialization because the commitment serialization done with the first instruction only, and this structure may be serialized for storage in a space efficient manner or for network with the different trade-offs as we discussed yesterday. Also, you remember this scheme from yesterday talk, so the way we create the commitment when we get the Bitcoin transaction prototype draft of the transaction structure and additional data like original pub keys in scripts, message. These are converted into container type. We put a commitment into this container and from this commitment we can get both the modified transaction which can be published on chain or be used in the Lightning Network channel and the proofs of the commitment which will be stored off chain. And here is the example how it can be done for the transaction, the transaction com container structure and transaction commitment structure with the fields for entropy and transaction with the fee output. So when we need to create a transaction commitment, we will need to modify a fee. And to modify a fee, we need to know which of the outputs we can change in order to get the different fee. And here we po point to the number of that output and the provide a container for the transaction outputs. After applying a tweak generated from the message, we will get a new tweak transaction, commit, uh, transaction output commitment and the original transaction outputs. Also, we will need this information to pass it for the off-chain data to prove the actual fact of the, fact of the commitment. <sighs> Moving further from the code, We need now to decide how we will uh, build the software architecture for daemons, wallets, and how we will use library in different way. Uh, we decided to stick to the following guidelines. First of all, the architecture should be microservice based, not monolithic with Bitcoin, like with Bitcoin, LMD, Eclair, and even not multi-process like with the C-Lightning. We should use microservice architecture and 
you already probably know that there is a lot of talks in Bitcoin Core community in bit th bit between Bitcoin Core developers for a number of years that it's so good to be able to convert Bitcoin Core into microservice basis architecture to separate the wallet, separate g uh, user interface. And it's so hard to do that it takes years to achieve the result. Uh, we wouldn't like to repeat the same mistake and we would like to create something that will be from the day one microservice based. We will use uh, a zero message queue for IPC communications, no <laughs> JSON, RPC and other outdated protocols with a poor uh, speed, both speed and um, security properties. Uh, we will use macaroons for authentication, which is well known system. And uh, we use reuse existing daemon services and components as much as possible. I mean, existing that are proven to be working, like Bitcoin Core itself. But the idea is, why not to extend these rules to the whole LNPBP technological stack, not just RGB? The actual effort for that may be not that large, comparing to the effort of fighting and or trying to support outdated standards and poorly designed historical architectures. Let's investigate into this question a little bit. We will start with imagining a world where everything is done in the right way. Oh yeah, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I was too tired. <laughs> Great right way. <laughs> um, starting from Bitcoin itself. The Bitcoin has two different layers. I mean, Bitcoin Core. The first layer is a part of the blockchain. It is the state, the actual state of the blockchain data. And the state of blockchain is UTXO set. This is a consensus, critical thing. However, there is another part related to Bitcoin communications and the replication of the state. Uh, Bitcoin Core connects other peers, transfers block, maintains the mempool, and this is not a consensus critical part in theory. In practice, everything in Bitcoin is consensus critical, but if we will design from the from the scratch, we can as easily separate the components related to P2P communications and ephemeral state, which don't have to be persistent, running in the memory database with the different trade-offs, and this layer can be open to external network. It doesn't have any private keys or anything that is critical. It can be isolated in DMZ zone and it can scale both as a threads and as a process across the multiple machines, increasing the speed of communication, blockchain synchronization, and so on. It will be used and talked to the time chain daemon, which will maintain the validity of the blockchain which will check the validity, actually do the verification, and know the set of transactions. This daemon will be asked by other processes, is this transaction valid? Do, is it included at blockchain at what height? And uh, this would be much more scalable and security-based. Of course, they should communicate through the zero message queue, all of them. Regarding the lightning, Pretty much the same situation. There is a peer-to-peer -peer communications happening through the network with a, some core daemon and channel, and we need a daemon per channel to maintain the state of the channel. So th this denotes that there are multiple processes, this denotes multi multiple threads. Additionally to that, we need a separate daemon to keep the routing map. To sign the transactions, we need to put a secure key management as a separate process, maybe integrated with hardware security modules. And it will maintain the keys and be used by channel daemon to, to sign the transactions, updated transactions. Also, we will need a separate process for keeping the list of all processes 
with a zero message queue, we need to make sure that, for instance, if this process have crashed, or this process ca have crashed and they have restarted, the lightning daemon don't need to spawn another channel daemon for the channel that is already operated by existing daemon. They have to locate each other and re-establish the connection. For that reason, we need this uh, directory daemon, directory service daemon. And the for the client validated state, we again will have two daemons for peer-to-peer -peer communications and proof transfers and for maintaining one daemon per genesis state to maintain the actual client validated state. And it will talk to channel daemon to update the channel when it, the channel bounded state need to be updated and to time chain daemon to validate the historical proofs. It will be all the keys are here. Yeah. Uh, this updates only states. This daemon shouldn't update transactions. So it might it should ask channel daemon to sign the new version of the transaction. Again, time chain D, I, I didn't draw all the arrows of possible communication, but yeah. yeah, it should be, the, the keys should be only in a single place if we need them. If we don't need them, we, we are using like cold stored keys. Again, they are not here anyway. Sorry? Yeah. And the last part, we will have a command line utility, which will use again zero message queue to invoke different API calls from different daemons. So it wouldn't go on, uh, on the disk into the blockchain directory. It will ask the daemon located in through this service to return the actual information from the blockchain. Uh, but it seems like that we have to rewrite everything. Fortunately, uh, we can start doing that today without rewriting everything. For sure, we need to create this one. It's not a big problem. There is not a lot of functionality. And here, we have a lot of good libraries. We just need to structure them out and create a standalone daemon for that. With Bitcoin, what we do? We take Bitcoin Core and create a Rust wrapper around Bitcoin Core process. First of all, it isolates Bitcoin from external environment with via JSON, RPC, and other unsecured services. It is compiled without wallet or uh, graphical user interface. And it is limited in functionality. It can't talk to external world. It can't make P2P connections. We just limit to a strict set with a zero message queue interface that we think that is important for the consensus critical stuff. The rest of the Bitcoin core is just not used, even if it is there. No, this is Bitcoin D. Yeah. Limited Bitcoin D enclosed by the other process. So basically you compile Bitcoin D with the Rust uh, wrapper. So Bitcoin D becomes a library inside the Rust. For P2P communications, we use Rust Bitcoin library, and I already have a prototype that allows you all P2P communications done easy in an easy way, and we don't need Bitcoin Core D for that. It's a s not a big, small piece of software. With the Lightning, it's even simpler because, namely, this architecture is already implemented in C Lightning. And we can start uh, by just wrapping existing daemons into Rust interface with a zero message queue protocol and then gradually replacing them with a pure Rust code. Like here and here, first of all. And actually, this is idea which is also supported by Christian Decker. 
And the most important part that you can rewrite daemon one by one. And daemons can be implemented in different languages already today. For instance, uh, HM, uh, HSM daemon called in the keys for C Lightning is a Python code. And it will be replaced with this one. And for sure, we have to write everything for the state management from scratch. But it happens that all we need to create is just one, two, three, four wrappers, key management service, directory service, and Bitcoin P2P protocol, which is mainly implemented already. So that's the roadmap which we would like to follow to do what we decided to do and how it can work with a non-custodial client wallets. The idea that, that where there will be a special dedicated wallet service facing external world with a isolated from all of this and whenever the, wa the actual wallet will be built using Rust and PPP library wrapped in a C or WASM for web around which we will have a Swift or GVM or JavaScript API for easy use because zip wrapper will be not uh, object oriented. And the actual mobile developed by a third party will be just talking to this and evoking the calls to, to do some specific stuff. But the most of the stuff will be done on the server. Uh, there are two options. Unfortunately, I haven't made a second version of the slide. You can either move the key management into the mobile wallet, such the mobile wallet signs the data provided by the backend, or you can maintain it here if the actual uh, infrastructure is run on the infrastructure owned by the owner of the wallet. For instance, you have a node at your home that can host all of that. Uh, regarding the API client server with my um, integration, uh, we can we can have the API working again over zero message queue in one way with a load balancing everything required, and the information delivered back to the wallet through the Apple push notification and Google messaging services in a synchronous way and when the client if is offline. This means that if you receive payment over the Lightning network or a new state over the RGB network, it will be received here and transferred in this way, evoking the wallet from offline sta status. And this channel is can still continue to operate. Even if you have keys here, the Lightning network channel daemon may use this route to ask for the signature and obtain it backwards without evoking the actual user interface in the ground. Yeah, that's, I was going to do the animation of traveling these signatures, but haven't finished it. So yeah, I, I propose to do a small break. We have uh, two small sessions left for the conclusions, conclusions and organizational stuff. And then the we will end over. Maybe questions or discussion. If this server side is not self-hosted, so some trusted third party, uh, is there any risk other than privacy leak? Keys? So in, I, it is third party, if it is third party, the wallet actually have to run this uh, key storage service itself. Yeah. The KD should be inside the Rustel and PPP in this case. Okay, and so assuming that keys are on the phone. Yeah. W what private information uh, specifically for RGB assets does the server get? Again, it depends on the structure because these all are using Rustel and PPP and the wallet uses Rustel and PPP. So it depends how much of the API you would like to put into the wallet because the bottom line services are all there. And you can easily either, if you don't trust the state, you can manage the state there 
but you still have to leak some information like I'm waiting for a payment with this Genesis state so the server side can monitor and evoke a synchronous update via push notification. Uh, my question is about the architecture you choose. Um, have you thought about some kind of uh, new vect attack vectors that could mm, be there if you had some latency? Because one of the, you know, the microservice architectures is really useful in uh, uh, web services where you usually need some scalability features that I don't think we will ever need here. I don't know if you are, if you agree with this, but with with a broker, uh, you have some kind of latency that could, um, I don't know if could bring some uh, attack vectors here uh, about the consensus and the synchronization of the network. Um, just a concern about the really need of broke some of these services between the, the network exposed layer and and the the core uh, the core libraries. I, I think the ideal way of having all these components running in the Docker instances. So it's not about doing the separate servers. It's more about isolating process from each other. Yeah for information to prevent information leaks different attacks so if one of the servers have a, has a backdoor or was attacked anyhow the attacker can't move anywhere outside of the scope of the service so it increases the security the second the, the communications will be done not through the broker but uh, there are message queue p2p connections yeah. which are uh, much more much 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 faster than JSON RPC used today mm. like order of magnitude faster and more secure comparing to JSON RPC because we have so many issues with JSON RPC mm -hmm. that it's hard to imagine that how we can uh, get more vulnerable by getting rid of it so um, wha why do we prefer a broker instead of just have a gateway and validate some REST API interface. But w w where is broker? There is no broker here. I mean, a queue, it's you, you, can, you can see like kind of broker you can... You no, no, no. The, you use the zero message queue as a library mm -hmm. and you establish direct P2P socket connection. There is no separate zero message queue process through which you communicate. Okay. Okay. So you, you won't have a queue that the service is going to consume. You just have... No, 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 you don't. Okay. So just, just it. I'm and uh, why do we need microservice architecture? First of all, yes, for sure, scalability at the high load. There is no high load here, but also it's not ab only about scalability. It's also about uh, security, upgradability, and uh, yeah, it's a feature that the domain-driven development is a good thing. Yeah, you can have a separate versions so or different versions yeah, of the Lightning Network running in parallel. Uh, also, the point is that there would be services which will require this, like mm -hmm. payment operators, payment processors, merchant uh, processors, a lot of situations will be when we will need a scalability. Or for instance, you will be a merchant s serving millions of clients a day. And today, you're so much limited by the scalability of the poorly designed software in the Bitcoin sphere that actually it creates another problem on the adoption uh, route uh, on the on a few conferences I, I haven't chance to carefully listen to the talks but I remember at least at Baltic Honey Bajor and the lightning conferences there were three or four dedicated talk to the scalability and it is an issue already mm. so I think it's also okay. if while for the private user it's not an issue but generally it might be an issue Again, you definitely need scalability at Bitcoin protocol daemon for blockchain and P2P traffic. You need scalability for gossip traffic already. Mm -hmm. So there are points where it might be required at the even at the user level. Okay. Hmm? Okay, let's have a break then. Let's continue. We are back to life. 
on the stream. Uh, the last two sections will be devoted to some conclusion and further development roadmap and also give an overview about the plans of LNPBP Association. I think it will take not more than a half an hour. Um, generally, RGB is being developed in form of three streams. The one stream is uh, focused around uh, the core standards, set of standards, which is Lightning Network independent for the client-side validation pr paradigm. It is a security crucial part, and we will invite, and we already have as reviewers, and we invite as reviewers Prutu Todd, Andrew Pelstra, and maybe, I don't know, because he's very busy with Taproot, Peter Will, and uh, we passed through two rounds of review with the Peter Todd so far, and the current specification wasn't reviewed yet, so we will go again into this process quite soon. The second stream is Lightning Network, RGB, and Spectrum. Uh, m it is a scalability critical part, as we have already understood that from all these days of discussions. We will invite, Christian Decker made a first review of it. Uh, we will invite them again to review the current version, and um, probably Rene will also join that. At least he already did, a, uh, you already did a lot of input to the, to it. And uh, maybe Alex Bathworth will be also part of that story. And confidential assets interoperability or a joint standard with ca confidential assets, it is a privacy and uh, interoperability critical part. And we need Eldu Pestra and Adam back. They already done a number of inputs into this direction. So we hope for further collaboration. The point is that we all we have to complete all three of them to launch the protocol. We can't go live just with a core IGB without scalability on Lightning Network because it's just pointless to have something on chain. Uh, we can't do that without privacy. If you do something without privacy from the very beginning, it will be really hard to edit and it can be deprecated from the protocol. So you have a two version of protocol like with Zcash, private transactions and normal transactions and you can have regulations just saying you should use this without the privacy features. There are some risks. Uh, the core RGB protocol is, uh, we still need a lot of Peter Todd input. Uh, it's a, a security assessment and we already passed through multiple redesigns of protocol structure and it can't continue for any longer, so we need to finalize. It seems that we have arrived to something that the most of the participants are agreeing on, so hopefully we wouldn't have any major refactoring. Uh, with the Lightning Network, we we'll spent half a day discussing all the risks, so I wouldn't reiterate that. And with the confidential assets, the, co the complexity of zero-knowledge components and uh, risks of hidden inflations, which we needed to avoid, but the idea that we came up with yesterday regarding if we are able to get rid of range proofs, we are able to get a uh, risk of the hidden inflation, basically. We need to verify that, that we can actually do that, and that will it will prevent any possible hidden inflation. If it will be so, it would be a great, great news. We had passed throughout development uh, a number of challenges, and we found solution to them namely uh, how to fit RGB into Lightning Network in standards compliant way without changing the Lightning Network itself. We, the, the original version of RGB started with the op return outputs and for sure, for instance, it can be fitted easily into Lightning Network. Uh, but we need op return for uh, old uh, hardware wallets, for instance, so we can be without them and it have taken quite a long to be able to find a common standard which can cover different situations. Uh, the Lightning Network instability. And the way we're trying to address that is uh, at the same time we create a strict uh, formal subset of the standards and we will work on uh, rustilization of the C Lightning and further modularization and uh, hopefully it will help us to have a node version which will be very strict standard compliant and still we don't need to do all the work on implementing all new things that are coming to the lightning network and do sharing this work with the block stream. Um, 
yeah, uh, hopefully we will be joined by in that work work with the chain code who already are actually maintainers of La Rust Lightning library and they plan to do a standalone node and by Wasabi who are also interested in having a lightning node security and privacy focused lightning node uh, so we will try to join our forces to achieve this goal faster together but even under the same s such circumstances it will take months months to do all of that even outside of the rgb functionality itself we understand that so that's another challenge and confidential access interoperabil interoperability uh, we started project without thinking about confidential assets later we understood that we need to be interoperable with them and later we understood that we can't be non-confidential at all so what is the reason of doing two versions of the same stack of the protocols if uh, confidential assets and liquid are interested in the client-side validation and they are interested we basically have the same uh, parts client-side validation confidentiality and also they want to work over the lightning network so even if it will be two standards they will share the same protocol primitives or maybe we will be able to create a single one because Andrew he is trying to he is planning to work over the next year on the second version of Continental Assets, and uh, we we have planned to have a brainstorming together how we can help each other in this regard and maybe uh, do something together. Uh, the current status of all these streams, like we are on our way of writing and finalizing code and specifications for the latest version of the protocols we already have thrown out co three complete previous implementations and specs uh, with the lightning network we like Huawei with the final specs still a lot of work to do uh, but it seems that there are no major issues left and all, all previous issues have been addressed and with the confidential assets we are very at a very early stage we understand the zero knowledge but still we don't know for instance for asset type confidentiality how to do that and we need to investigate into range proof commitments fortunately we know that there are bulletproofs there are uh, Pedersen commitments they work in the confidential transactions they work in the Mimble Wimble so the primitives are there and we don't need to invent a new zero knowledge and even without a be, a be able to hide the state from the multi-message uh, commitments the cases for multi-message commitments will be really rare and it wouldn't be that huge security leak because we still have a confidential amount what do we require first of all we require reviewers on all of the streams more involvement from the review reviewers and we need to make sure that all the parts are working and specified uh, at the best possible level of quality so as a summary we have a lot of positive and negative things uh, it seems that the industry is aware of what we are doing and many parties are interested in contributing participating or just helping uh, we have high potential potential to come with a, uh, to end up with a single standards for assets for the lightning for the lightning liquid and bitcoin and uh, we have better privacy huge features today as we were originally expected because original impression from the client side validation was that it is somehow more private but somehow less private than on chain data now we were able to fix most of most of these problems many security risks and potential vulnerabilities also were mitigated uh, we achieved much better modularization and layerization not a monolithical standard non, not a monolithical architecture which allows us a bigger flexibility and readiness for the future upgrades in bitcoin and lightning network we found a way to implement lightning network specific parts without conflicts with other standards however there is a negative side of the story still a, a lot of stuff to do and to develop in order to bring the assets live many external risks which we can't control or address especially with lightning network much more work on lightning that network that we were originally expected like three times more and uh, we will be re really restricted in what we will be able to upgrade 
uh, in the parts that we will be able to upgrade, to upgrade after the first initial release, which we were discussing in all details yesterday. And the last part on which we will finalize today uh, and the whole non-conference for RGB is I would like to spend a few minutes showing what our LNP between association is trying to achieve and what are the bigger picture we are thinking of thinking on even outside the RGB itself and why it starts with the RGB. The idea that RGB, as we already have uh, understood, uh, on sti state, it allows better smart contracts. Uh, we don't invent a new security model. We don't try to do a new blockchain. We don't try to repeat the mistakes of Ethereum, which put all the layers into all the different things that has to be done on different abstraction layers into a single system. Uh, but we still have a programmable state which can be used for assets, games, identity, reputational systems, and who knows what. This state uses no chain space, nearly. And uh, we can shard, not sharking, but sharding. <laughs> and we can shark <laughs> the uh, off-chain data into at least uh, specific to Genesis state, and we can separate one Genesis state history deck from the other. Uh, and it doesn't require us in to invent new sharding, which is really, really complex project, and Ethereum trying to do that for five years and no signs that they will succeed. Uh, we have uh, strong privacy for these smart contracts, and it, they work with the lightning, they are scalable, uh, they have a functionality for decentralized exchange and decentralized state, uh, coordinated state updates across the Lightning Network. And we have of chain Turing completeness uh, and formal verification with simplicity when we will be able to finalize this part. So I will name this Ethereum 2 made right, which is not Ethereum, but on Bitcoin, Larry's private uh, off-chain sharded with the Lightning and Bitcoin. Uh, this is the vision of Lightning uh, LNP BPS Association, how all these standards can be interoperable uh, all together. And that's why we decided to use this as a logo of association, the NABLA sign. This is also a case how we can think about those layers. You all know this terminology, layer one, layer two, layer three. What are they? We will def we try to define them and understand that in the way that the layer one is something that is based on the proof of work, which gives you censorability. And the layer two is something that is based on transaction-based uh, constructions. So I wouldn't say that the Lightning Network is the only case for the layer two, because sidechains, to a certain extent, is also a layer two technology. And even Bitcoin blockchain, it's not only proof of work, but it is based, it contains the layer or the transactions which can be taken one day from the blockchain, remaining blockchain, as just a commitment layer. Uh, the layer three is client-side extra transaction data. And they are used either in ephemeral, ephemeral way, like in Lightning Network messaging, or with a client validated state. And on top of that, we can be, what we can build with all these smart constructs coming from here, scalability coming from here, uh, messaging coming from here, we can build really complex and interesting decentralized solutions for storage, messaging, assets, computing, and other. Also, we can use a uh, complex dimension, <laughs> the idea by Chaka Mazuko, to create another um, uh, taxonomy. So there is a consensus specific part, which present both in blockchain and client validated state, a federation based part, which is used in the side chains or different solutions that can also use uh, Bitcoin blockchain directly and also in client client data state. There is a multi-party uh, part where you can 
reach an agreement across a number of parties like build a multi-party payment channels and direct P2P part. So that's kind of taxonomy that we are using. And for the actual standards we define, we use this approach. So there is something that can be defined at transaction level. There is something that may be defined at the commitment scheme level, um, like public key tweaking, transaction tweaking, single use seals that utilize the bottom two layers. On top of that, we built a state history, the uh, direct cyclic graphs, which we can further evolve with a schema. And on top of that, we can built and assets or other types of client-side validated applications. Another way of putting all together is that at the transaction level, we have uh, such things as a commitment schemes or advanced, advanced multi-sig schemes, which are different starting from normal multi-sig to music. At the transaction history, we have client-side validation payment channels and side chains as possible solution to build the history of the state. Uh, Off-chain data, off-chain metadata with important protocols related to messaging, serialization and state structuring and metastate structuring and application la level that may address different business cases, and use cases. These all standards are kept under this own PBP as repository. It's an uh, old screenshot, we now have four there, and they it will be appearing more and more. This is the plant list of the standards. And this as the association will be actually supervising this project. We are here today with RGB and Spectrum, and we will move, we will work on improvements of the Lightning Network formal standardization process. Hopefully we will succeed in that together with the uh, Blockstream and others who are interested in this. And after that, we already have a prototype for storage and messaging with economic guarantees, which name is Storm, and computing, including high load computing, including even machine learning task for Prometheus. Uh, the participants of what is happening here is all of you from BHB Network, Giacomo Tuco, uh, Blockstream individual contributors, not Blockstream as a company. Uh, my company in Bitcoin, Chainside, Hyperdivision, Wasabi, and uh, already contributing a lot with their ideas. And financial contributors are Bitfinex and Tether, Poseidon Group, uh, Fulgur Ventures, not Perspective anymore, they're already part of this. And uh, we are waiting, and Voltor and Six are also interested in financing all these efforts. <coughs> 